Hello and welcome to this presentation. Today I will discuss about the combination of full field swept source optical coherence tomography with laser Doppler holography. So laser Doppler holography is a plot flow imaging technique that relies on digital holography and that has been recently implemented for retinal blood flow imaging. The holographic detection allows the high temporal resolution the imaging of a wide range of flow velocities, the possibility to compensate numerically for aberration, and the possibility to image the actual direction in red and blue. It has also proven efficient to image the choroidal vasculature non-invasively, and there the functional contrast based on velocity is very helpful to help distinguishing uh, arteries and veins. And in the interior segment, uh, LDH is capable of revealing blood flow in the vasculatures of the conjunctiva in the iris, and it can also reveal problems of transparency of the interior segment. And on the other hand, holographic ossity, which is the other name for full field swept source ossity, it allows very fast ossity imaging of the retina, and from the phase fluctuations of uh, this. Uh, OCT volumes, it's possible to detect um, any kind of micro movement in the retina, and there it can be used to detect the uh, vessel pulsation. It can also be used to detect the neural response of the retina to a light stimulus. And it has also been shown that when manipulating the spatial temporal coherence of the light source, it's possible to largely increase the quality of choroidal images by reducing multiply scattered light, and some very, very nice images can be obtained. So we wanted here to combine those two holographic imaging technique on a single instrument, and we did so with the purpose of imaging retinal blood flow. So the setups for these two imaging techniques are the following. Uh, on the left is LTH and on the right is OCT. And you can see that um, there are many, many similarities between the two. They are quasi identical, which makes them compatible. So they both use a laser diet. They use the same optical conjugations, so the light is focused in the front focal plane of the eye and the light back scattered is combined with a reference beam onto an ultra-fast camera. And more importantly, the uh, requirements in terms of camera frame rates are also similar, which is about 60 kHz. So for LDH, it's about um, sampling Doppler frequency shifts up to a few tens of kHz. And with OCT, it's about freezing the motion of the eye during the measurement of a volume and it's also a frame rate of about 60 kilohertz. Now the differences would be that uh, with LDH there is a single wavelength that you use to detect the Doppler fluctuations whereas in OCT multiple wavelengths are required. LDH has been so far demonstrated with cross-polarized light to remove the specular reflection from the cornea and um, more importantly LDH has been so far demonstrated in a defocused detection and what that means is that the camera is voluntarily uh, set backwards by a few centimeters and one area of the eye that should be imaged onto a single pixel is instead um, imaged over multiple pixels of the camera and that stands in contrast with OCT which is in a focus detection and one pixel corresponds to one area on the eye and that has some importance. So here is the setup that we use um, to combine both modalities on the same setup. So uh, we had the swept source laser that we were using for OCT that uh, luckily by default is able to uh, alternate between OCT and LDH imaging because at the end of the sweep, the laser positioned itself on the starting wavelength and it remains stable on that wavelength. And it's possible to use that time with a stable wavelength to perform Doppler imaging. So it's then very simple to alternate with the same light source between the two imaging modalities. We added a cylindrical lens to have the focus along one dimension. Uh, we wanted to preserve sharp lateral contrast for the live preview on one dimension and we were then able to benefit from the advantage of a defocus detection on the other dimension. And uh, we were able to use a normal beam splitter cube 
because the specular reflection was simply out of the coherence range, thus it was not an issue. So first, to illustrate the benefits of a defocus detection, here it what it looks like when you use a normal holographic OCT setup at a stable wavelength to perform Doppler imaging. Here is the kind of image that you would have, and it's a bit disappointing because the blood flow structures are hidden behind uh, the interferogram pattern. And when writing down the equation, it's uh, immediate to see that in the interference cross terms, the object field is uh, modulated by the reference field, and almost all of the light that reaches the sensor is from the reference field. So that explains why uh, the interferograms is modulating the Doppler response. And uh, then it's possible to normalize the interferograms by taking the square root of the intensity to improve the quality of the images. And that relies on the assumption that the square root is exactly equal to uh, the reference field. And of course, that assumption is not exact in reality. And that's why we still have artifacts after that normalization, because um, the sensor is not perfect. And these artifacts are particularly visible uh, when the eye is moving. Uh, you can see that um, there are some dead pixels, either white or black, because the original pixels were underexposed or saturated. There's some residual influence from the uh, interferogram illumination. And you can see some sort of um, noise with a specific pattern that probably corresponds to some defect of the sensor. So it feels like the retina is seen through a tinted window, and it means that there are still some um, residual differences in blood flow response from pixel to pixels. And that is visually uh, unpleasing, and it's uh, problematic even when you start doing some sophisticated uh, processing with correlations, for example, for, to find something in the variation, spatial temporal variations of the signal. And it was very disappointing compared to what we were expecting, uh, we were hoping to reach as uh, the measurement uh, from, from Paris, which are done in a totally defocused uh, condition. And there you see that there is a uniform pixel blood flow response. And there is also the uh, color Doppler imaging thing. So that is um, when the measurement is defocused and you do the numerical propagation to bring the hologram into focus, then the data becomes complex. And because it's complex, you have the possibility to differentiate the uh, positive and negative frequency shift and thus the actual direction of blood flow. And you can colorize it in red and blue. So for these two reasons, uh, we wanted to introduce a defocus in our detection. So that is what we've done here with the uh, added cylindrical lens. We do the same experiments with interferograms at a stable wavelength, and this time we do a refocusing before doing the Doppler analysis. And uh, this movie on the right shows the refocusing between the camera plane and the retinal plane. And you can see that uh, as the retinal features come into focus, you have both the uh, actual direction, the red-blue contrast that appears, and all the uh, non-uniform blood flow response from the camera planes uh, the effect is blurred out. And it's possible to easily uh, intuit, intuitively understand why uh, that is. As this numerical propagation is mathematically a convolution by a complex kernel. And so the value of one pixel on the retina uh, is determined by the value of multiple pixels in the camera plane. And so even though this pixel originally had some differences, in both flow response, these differences are averaged out through the process of the convolution. And otherwise said, that means that the camera plane is simply out of focus in the retinal plane and its features are, are blurred out. So then, thanks to um, this simple element, we were able to perform uh, LDH on the holographic OCT setup with a blurring of the artifacts within lines and the uh, color Doppler imaging contrast that is sufficiently strong for single frames to be able to distinguish the local actual direction of blood flow. Mm -hmm. 
So uh, here is the result of a measurement uh, where we use both uh, LDH and OCT. Uh, the short time windows for each imaging modalities are a few milliseconds long and the instrument can alternate between the two modalities within 70 microseconds. It is the time that it takes for the laser to alternate between a sweep and a stable wavelength. And uh, the exact same correction for aberration and registration for the motion of the eye is applied to all holograms. So that gives us a field of view that is directly comparable. So here for LDH, we have the um, actual direction of plot flow on the left, the slow flow and fast flow in cyan and red in the middle, and on the right is the systole diastole map that is made from the uh, blood flow changes throughout cardiac cycle that allows to differentiate arteries and veins. And here is the result of the uh, OCT uh, measurement that is quasi simultaneously acquired, uh, is shown volumetrically. And here is the, for the capillary layer, an example of B-scan and the OCT and geography image. And then we uh, have access directly to the contrast provided by both modalities over the same field of view, which is nice. And one direct observation that we could make from this is that, um, well, we could easily, well, almost effortlessly see the capillaries with uh, full velocity, but we could not see them uh, with LDH. And what that meant is that it's not the optical resolution that is preventing us from visualizing uh, capillaries with LDH, it's much more likely to be a problem of flow resolution. So at this point, uh, we were uh, happy with the images that we were getting and we wanted to, um, well, better understand the pulsatile signal that are measured with each modality. So with LDH, it's quite immediate that we are monitoring blood flow. And with OCT, what has been demonstrated to um, measure the propagation of uh, the pulse wave is to monitor the phase difference between the RPE and NFL. That gives the local retinal thickness changes and its evolution over time gives something related to the uh, pulse wave. And we wanted to better understand what was the relationship between these two signals. So to do that, we were using the following uh, measurement parameters. We had a camera frame rate of about 60 kilohertz. We were taking a time between volumes, uh, preferentially less than 10 milliseconds to avoid any phase wrapping in the OCT signal. We were using just 20 nanometer of, uh, of sweeping range because you only need a low axial resolution to separate the RP and NFL for this specific purpose of, um, of measuring the retinal thickness with OCT. We're taking about 150 frames for OCT and another 150 frames for LDH. And with that, we could record about 200 volumes on our uh, camera, which has an onboard memory of only 16 gigabytes. And that gives us a measurement duration of about two seconds or so. So here is the result of such type of measurement where um, LDH and OCT are uh, interleft. Um, on the upper part is LDH. Uh, we are monitoring blood flow in an artery in red and even in blue. The regions of interest can be laid directly on the vessels. And on the lower part is the OCT signal. So there we integrated the phase difference between the RP and NFL. And the regions of interest are laid uh, in the direct vicinity of vessels and we are monitoring once again in an artery in red and again in blue. So if we have a closer look of uh, how the signals behave in the two types of vessel by normalizing uh, the signal in each case. Uh, here is uh, the both signal for LDH and OCT in the artery in red and on the right in blue for the vein. And you can see that uh, the signals are nicely correlated. And it means that, um, well, blood flow um, induces some variations in pressure that drives dilation, displacement of the vessels that itself is passed onto uh, displacement of the retinal tissue. And that is what is detected with OCT. And so the blood flow passing through the vessels correlate with the differential uh, variations of thickness around those vessels. 
Um, but at this point, we were not totally satisfied with the comparison because we could still see some deviations between LDH and OCT signal, especially in the venous signal. And uh, we were wondering whether that was some um, fast fluctuations of blood flow that could not be monitored with OCT or whether there was some LDH artifacts. And it turned out to be uh, the second option. So uh, unfortunately, we found that uh, these were correlated with the axial velocity of the eye that can be very precisely monitored with LDH. And when comparing the instantaneous axial velocity of the eye with this deviation between the LDH and OCT signal in the vein, we could see that they were exactly uh, um, simultaneous. And so it means that um, the actual motion from the eye is not totally suppressed by the eigen decomposition in LDH and it generates some artifacts that are particularly visible in the venous waveform because its uh, amplitude of variations is lower than in the arterial signal. So next we investigated uh, what is the distribution of phase around vessels, why uh, in some areas it's positive, when in other areas it's negative, what is exactly what determines the sign of local retina thickness changes. And to understand it, it's uh, good to have in mind, well, these videos uh, with uh, video data from ophthalmoscopy, where you can see that uh, when the vessel is running, uh, going straight, then there is a dilation of the vessel with the pulse width that is symmetrical, that is occurring on both sides of the vessel. But when the vessel is curved, then it's uh, possible to see that there is a displacement, so an extension and displacement of the vessels towards the exterior of the vessel. And it's very uh, nicely visible with uh, adaptive optics, uh, but it can be seen with even some uh, SLO movie. And it's a problem that has also been studied uh, with other ways. And what it means is that the pressure due to flow is asymmetrically applied on the walls of curved vessels. And that is the case for both in-plane and out-of-plane vessels. And with that in mind, it's easier to understand what's happening here. So here is an, uh, along an artery, you have uh, four different scenarios of phase distribution. And it's not uh, easy to understand why at, at first sight. Um, in regions one and two, uh, although the phase shift is of the same sign on both sides of the vessels, it's positive and then negative. And in region three and four, it's a phase shift that has a different sign on both sides of the vessel. And we were able to understand why by comparing with the uh, directional blood flow from LTH, because there you can reveal what is not visible on an on image is the actual curvature of the vessel. So that is in region one, you can see that there is a section of the vessel where flow is going upward and then it's going downward. And that means that there is an um, actual curvature that, that is upward and it's the opposite in region number two. So that is, there is a, a downward curvature of vessels. And that leads to a phase shift of the same side on both sides of the vessel when there is an out of plane curvature of the vessel. And in region number three and four, then uh, it's possible to see directly on the unfast image there is an in plane curving. And that leads to a phase shift of opposite sign on both sides of the vessel. And it's uh, easier to understand why by looking at the cross-sectional schematics. So what we are monitoring is the phase difference between the RPE and NFLs, retinal thickness. And in region number one, for example, there is this upward curving of the vessels that we saw with LDH. And what happens is then the situation is the same on both sides of the vessels, that the vessel exerts a pressure and displacement upward that is um, that is visualized from that also provoke induces a displacement of the retinal tissue and thus to a thickening on both sides and in the region number two then the pressure is applied downward so displacement of the vessel downward and there is probably some sort of suction force that is attracting the nfl downward and thus it reduces the thickness of the retina on both sides of the vessel 
And then, uh, in the case of in-plane curving, as uh, in areas number three and four, the situation is not the same on both sides of the vessel. That is, the pressure and the displacement is on one side of the vessel, and thus um, you have a thickening on one side, and on the other side, uh, where the vessel has been displaced and there is void, and there is um, probably the upper part of the tissue is going down, and then there is a um, reduction of the thickness. And the situation is opposite in the areas number three and four. And um, in reality, of course, all of these scenarios are not absolutely isolated. And for example, in region number two, um, there is a combination of both out-of-plane and in-plane curving, and that is why the amplitude of the phase difference is not the same on both sides of the vessel, because there is also the contribution, the cumulative effect of the curvature in the uh, in-plane and out-of-plane uh, dimension. So in conclusion, uh, the take-home message from this presentation is really that LDH can be effortlessly performed on the holo holographic OCT setup. Uh, it just requires a little bit of defocus uh, to increase, that is to increase the quality of LDH images to remove the uh, artifacts from the camera plane and to allow color Doppler imaging. And the only thing that it's cost is that in a continuous measurement case, uh, then you have to alternate uh, between OCT and LDH imaging uh, recording on the camera and you need to lose a factor of two either in actual resolution or temporal resolution and the thing is for most uh, OCT application the temporal resolution of holographic OCT is already very high so it's not a problem to sacrifice a little bit of it. Uh, we found that the uh, retinal thickness changes around blood vessels are correlated with the blood flow that is passing through these vessels. And we found that uh, both the in-plane and out-of-plane curvature influence uh, at the same time the amplitude and the sign of retinal thickness changes. And uh, we expect that the combination of LDH and OCT could be valuable for um, clinical applications because it gives the um, possibility to image the same region at the same time or quasi at the same time and everything is directly co-registered and um, it can be also interesting for a dynamic phenomenon because of the high temporal resolution that it has. Uh, it could be interesting for corridor imaging when combining that with uh, some um, deformable membrane or multimode fiber as it has been uh, recently demonstrated. And because both uh, blood flow and OCT have been demonstrated to also have uh, that are able to measure something really nice for uh, neurovascular coupling, then the combination of these two modalities could be interesting for that application as well. So to finish, uh, I would like to thank my co-author and thank you for your attention.